you know, not only look competent, but really, I mean, you know, he may, he really threw some nice darts. I mean, I'm the first, you know, I'm thinking about the first score of the game right before halftime. That's third down. They're you know, knocking on the door inside, I think inside the Rutgers 10, you know, it gets kind of chased out of the pocket a bit, but he, you know, he keeps his eyes down towards the end zone and hits Jahan Dotson in the corner with a lovely dart for a touchdown. And that, to me, that was a huge momentum changer. You know, it's, you know, you're look, you're facing the possibility of either being scoreless or at least, or maybe just going up three, nothing at the half. And instead here you are, you go up seven zip, you know, your defense had been holding Rutgers in check. You know, they hadn't even crossed midfield at that point. They actually, Rutgers didn't even cross midfield, I believe until late third quarter, early fourth quarter. Yeah. I think it was early fourth quarter when they finally crossed midfield. Right. So this is, you know, so to, to get up seven zip like that right before the half against a, you know, offense Rutgers team that hadn't really been doing much off it. That was a, that felt like a nice blow delivered to them. And then, you know, of course the, the second touchdown drive when he hit up, uh, he hits Parker Washington. Seemed like he's, he might get sacked or he's just trying to, he might just tuck it and run. Instead he looks downfield and hits Parker Washington. Washington made a great adjustment for the ball and brings it in. You know, makes a 14 zip about midway for the third quarter. And uh, I actually said in the Slack channel, I called ball game right there. And then just with the way with how, you know, Penn State's defense was playing, I felt, you know, 14 points was going to be insurmountable for Rutgers offense, the way they were, the way they looked. Uh, they didn't have much of a ground game. And, you know, Noah Vedral just, you know, what outside of a couple throws to Bo Melton just didn't, you know, it wasn't anything spectacular. So this was kind of, even though early on, I'll say I, I kind of had those Illinois type vibes where, you know, Penn State's continually getting great field position. You know, winning the field possession battle early on, starting, you know, either like in their own, you know, beyond their own 35 or even in Rutgers territory and come away with no points. You know, you kind of got those flashbacks from the Illinois game in a sense. But at the same time, unlike the Illinois game, Rutgers couldn't run the ball. And I guess like Illinois, though, they also really couldn't throw it that well either. Even though I'd say I put Bill Melton over any of Illinois' receivers. Yeah, I mean, early on, it definitely had a lot of the same vibes that Illinois game. And you had to be thinking, oh, no, here we go again. Um, and I do think, and this obviously is not a knock on Sean Clifford at all, um, you and I both have sung his praises throughout the season. He's always been a really, really tough kid. I think getting Vayu in there and just having the healthy quarterback definitely made a big difference too. Um, for those who may not know, the flu bug hit Penn State and hard this week. Um, Sean or yeah, Sean Franklin, my lord, James Franklin said after the game that as of yesterday, walk on Mason Stahl was set to start a quarterback because Vayu was also dealing with this flu bug, and the Nittany Lions had no scholarship quarterbacks available. Um, I had no idea about that part. Yeah, he said in the post-game interview on the Big Ten Network, he oh, said man. they had, I believe he said, 36 players that were unavailable for one reason or another today. We saw it up front. They were down three starters on the offensive line because of this flu bug. They don't have linebacker Curtis Jacobs. So, you know, and with Clifford, he's been banged up to begin with. And you throw in a flu bug, man, it, it's tough to play through all that. And I think getting Vayu in there made a big difference even on that front, just to have the healthy quarterback – who could use his legs. I mean, I thought one thing that you did a tremendous job of today was using his legs and go get the first down when it was available. Um, for the most part, he did an excellent job hanging in the pocket. Even when the pocket started to collapse, he'd hang in there, scan the defense, you know, go through his progressions to find a receiver. And if it wasn't there, he made the safe throw or tucked it and got three, four yards and slid or ducked out of bounds. So again, I think those are plays that with Sean Clifford in his current physical state, I'm not sure he would be capable of making them or if he would try and make them how much they would allow him. You know, we, I feel like we saw that against Illinois. There were times he could have run for chunks and he didn't do it. And I wonder how much that was the coaching staff telling him not to, which I don't blame them either. Cause the guy's already banged up. You don't want to really put him in a bad spot. So I do think having the health of they made a big difference as well. And, you know, he just looked like a kid as the game went on, that confidence grew. Like you said, that throw to Dotson for the touchdown and for halftime, that was an absolute just – he threaded the needle with that, put it in that window, helped create that window, honestly. 
And, you know, there were multiple throws like that throughout the day from Bayou. And just you could not ask for more of him in this game. And it's it definitely makes you feel a lot better. You know, we'll get into the Michigan State matchup later on the show, but heading into that game with Sparty next weekend, if Clifford is not healthy, you know, seeing what Bayou has done, and yes, it was against Rutgers, but still just having that confidence, having that game experience now for Bayou could go a long way.